live, but not really live, in five, four, three, welcome to the Dirty Sports Podcast. I am your host, Andy Ruther, coming to you live from the Smut Studio in Venice Beach, California, with my co-host, Joey. No chill, pray now. Hello, Andy. I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna squeeze it into your intro, but you've got your intro so locked down. I thought you were gonna say, "Coming to you live for the last time from the Smut Studio in Venice Beach, California." Unless we uh, do it from the mayor's house sometime, from the mayor's apartment sometime. This is this will be the last ever Dirty Sports from the Smut Studio. How does it make you feel? Um. You know, I I think I always thought that the way that this would go is that you would move on to bigger and better things and that the Smut Studio would just remain the Smut Studio. Nick would be sleeping here. You know, you you you'd be dadding Nick, you'd be like, "None of your stuff is allowed to be out. You're not allowed to t- do anything to the studio. You're just allowed to sleep in this bed, put your clothes in the closet in there. We're going to come here." All week and do it. I never thought. I never thought we were going to go out this way. But 2020, man. Well, look, 2020 for sure. But also, what is go out this way? Did we think I was going to be here forever? I think some people did. I mean, I think a lot of people did. But like I said, I didn't think that. I just thought it would it would be like this. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, you know. Give, making you trying to ask you to have second thoughts about anything like the way everything's gone like i i gotta say during the uh during our fight against quality of life i never thought you would be back in cincinnati oh no but but like i said 2020 things yeah. change yeah no trust me i mean for for me obviously what i've gone through this year personally it's crazy to even think about two weeks ago and then I think about a month ago. And then I think about before my mom died. It's like this year for me is like it's it's literally a giant what the fuck meme. Yeah. And I think that way for a lot of people. But you're right. It's just it's almost like you went, you know, we're, we're let's say we're a sh- well, we are a show. But let's say like mine and your lives are a show within a show. The script just went off the rails. Yeah. And you're like, what do we do? You know, I actually I, I got a great analogy last night. It's it's I, I had dinner with my buddy Drew. And we were talking, he lost both his parents within a year. And so to be honest, he's kind of the only one that can fully relate to what I'm going through, because he's the only one I know who lost both parents within a year. But he put it best. Speaking of shows, he goes, it's so weird with your own life because the analogy he said was perfect. It's like you're a hit TV show and the two stars are gone forever. Yeah. Like he was saying that that's how it was with his parents, but you ha- but the show has to go on. A la your life has to go on. So obviously we're in the middle of all that and I'm making moves and yeah, if you asked me twelve months ago, would you be moving back? to Cincinnati, Ohio, I would have just laughed. Yeah. And here we go. The last show in the Smuts studio. It's, it's like the last episode of Cheers. And it's really putting us on a good level. Yeah. That's very complimentary. <laughs> it's changed so much. It really has. I got that picture from uh, Hall of Famer Stanga. I just texted to you last night the picture of before the carpet got cleaned. So gross. I mean, just the walls even. Like, there was shit all over the... Like, what was on the walls? So gross. Can you see it here? Oh, yeah. That... that uh, that On the wall there, that's where your desk used to be. So you have all kinds of, like, footprints up against the wall there. Literally looks like a fire had happened. Yeah. Looks like... It looks like the the room was empty. And basically, right where I'm sitting... A homeless person decided to move in, and he kept his little fire going in the corner where I'm sitting. Little burn marks on the wall. The the carpet there is all black. 
He was like, well, you know, I don't have heat in here, so I'm just going to keep a small fire going in the corner all day. So this was January 2016, like the first or second week of January. Because then I got this couch, and the transformation slowly started. But we've only had this set up where we're facing this wall for about two years, fully. We have recorded this show. I mean, obviously, we've recorded it mobily a couple times, you know, on different trips. We've done Zoom. We were in the Sideshow Network for a while. We did... uh, we did Machete's uh, studio a few times for episodes. Oh, yeah. Good we call did, back. How about downtown L.A.? How about the how about the Luke Rosencrantz years? The downtown L.A. filming in front of the brick wall with, like, the startup guys. Oh, my God. I forgot about we're that. We're like, I think what your show's missing is, like, a really cool lamp. And we were like, all right, that's something. I forgot about a lot of these. Yeah, but the more ju- the majority of the episodes, the f- the vast majority, have been recorded right here. Seventeen, what is this? Seventeen twelve Pacific Avenue. Seventeen twenty Pacific Avenue. If I, anybody wants to look at it on a map. Yeah, seventeen twenty Pacific Avenue, Venice nine zero two nine one. The the lost years for me, I don't know if they're the lost. I think the most interesting time of the show is kind of that year with Sideshow. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, we had a nice state-of-the-art studio we went to every day, but we had complete and utter morons running that studio. Uh, it was... it was The Sideshow Network w- is literally a sitcom. Like, it, it could be... It could have been a sitcom. Like, yeah. the woke, purple-haired producer... Who, but she wasn't even a per- like like let's not even give her that term. Maria was an engineer, a sound engineer. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. Uh, she split time with like a Sean. Sean, who is definitely on the spectrum, wrestling fan <laughs> from Buffalo, <laughs> avid wrestling fan. Good guy. How, how many times did he try to get wrestlers on our show? We we had one. Yeah, I was gone that episode. Thank yeah. God. Uh, then. I mean, just just all of the all the different people that were even involved. Like, you know, we would meet with like higher ups and you'd be like, what the fuck? Who's running this thing? The sales team. The girls were working. Hey, the front we desk. got you. Harry's Razors. Harry's Razors is blasting us with emails. You didn't get us anything. Yeah. You really didn't. Nice uh, studio, though. Yeah. Speaking of Harry's. I need I need I need some. Some shaves this week before I leave. Yeah, you gotta you gotta go home looking crisp. Yeah, you gotta look good, right? You know, Harry's has these new sharper blades, Joe. Have you tried these? Even sharper. Even sharper. Even better. Guys, new customers, new U.S. customers, excuse me, can redeem a trial offer of Harry's new sharper blades by going to Harry's.com forward slash dirty. I, you know, we talk about this show, Prano, and the longevity and the smart studio. No lie, we have worked with Harry's Razors basically almost the whole time of the show. We've been with Harry's now five years, six yeah. years. So Harry's has been a wonderful sponsor. You guys should support them. Give Harry's Sharpest Blades ever a try. Harry's has an amazing offer for listeners of Dirty Sports. Again, new U.S. customers can redeem a Harry's trial set at harrys.com forward slash dirty you'll get a five blade razor featuring their new sharper blades a weighted handle foaming shave gel with aloe and a travel cover to protect your blade when you're on the go just go to harrys.com forward slash dirty and redeem your trial offer today take it from a guy who has always hated shaving that nowadays when i keep my mustache and the, the important thing when you keep a mustache is to keep the rest of your face clean that makes the mustache pop take it from a guy who's always hated shaving i now look forward to it with harry's razors and if i'm ever on the road and i forget my razor or i you know run out of blades or whatever i go harry's or nothing yeah if i go to a store i don't i won't buy other blades i won't buy other razors yeah it's it's i mean 
truly our probably our longest running sponsor. Sponsor. It and, is. And so like so fitting it because is. I use I use it literally every day. So support us. Harrys.com forward slash dirty. Now I'm just thinking about the memory. You know what I'm thinking about right now? Memories. Just not even just dirty sports. I moved into this apartment January 2010. This apartment, and it's a small apartment, 390 square feet, it is tiny, has so many stories. You mean, how many total years do you think you lived with another person? Like, if you add up all the days, from Nick to guy on couch to the guy you had to run out of here. It's not. It's actually not that many. It's over a year. Yeah, it's probably over a year. Guy had to run out three months. How long was Nick here? January, February, March. He left, I think, April 12th. So you're already over six months. That's not even including Guy on Couch. How long was Guy on Couch here? It was about six months. Yeah. He lived. I was on the road doing those college comedy shows for three months. He was here by himself. And then I got back in November, and he left in May. That's six months. So it's about a year out of uh, 10 years here, 10 plus years. But like this couch and like, I'm not going to lie, I start thinking about some of the ladies, you know, you know, the memories just. Live tweet your Tinder dates. Oh my God, that was here. That's one of my favorite Andy Ruther. That's an all time Andy Ruther comedy moment. Oh, I'm such an asshole. That was January twenty fifth. No, January twenty fourteen. You know what I remember about that? You were kind of the catalyst. Do you remember how this all went down? No. You don't remember? Nope. I remember nothing, Andy. I was with you and your ex girlfriend at the time you, when you guys lived in Lincoln Place. The night before, did I, I. You know me. I have such a crazy memory on this stuff. The night before was a Friday. And I was watching a movie or sports, something with you and your lady. And I said I had a Tinder date the next night. And we were joking about me live tweeting it. And you were all for it. And your girlfriend at the time was, of course, 100% against it. But you you just planted that seed. Like, like you were. I was like, you live tweet the Grammys. You may as well live tweet this. Yeah. I mean, to looking back, like, that was so wrong. And I can openly say that. Like, that was mean. It was only wrong because it, like, went, it got crazy. But, like, it's not that wrong to say I live tweeted a date. But I was, I was, be, I was writing mean things. Right. Because she wasn't the brightest. Yeah. And I was saying mean things. But you she, had sex with her. That's the thing. That's that's what makes it an ultimate Andy Ruther. You're like roasting this girl on social media the whole time. She doesn't know. And you bang her. It's like if you just sent her home at the end of the night, this girl's like, oh, that guy's an asshole. He invites me out on a date. It doesn't go well. And he roasts me. He's roasting me on social media the whole time. But then you slept with her. I mean, that's. And again in the morning. <laughs> I'm a two for one guy. That's hilarious. You, you, you know, tweet your Tinder dates. Well, you know, it's like when you go to McDonald's. You get the mix and match, the two for one. Did she find out about it or you told her about it? She found out. She texted me like a week later because it went viral enough that. Somebody she knows saw it. She's like, were you on a date with this guy? This sounds like you. Yeah. Because remember, she was a fan of talking shit with Eddie Ift. Okay. Do you remember that? No. She knew Eddie, like, was a big fan of his podcast and had seen. So you can't feel that bad as well. It's like, she's a fan of that. <laughs> I mean, seriously, right? She's a fan of a show. Oh, that's a good point. Where they had, like, a hot dog eating contest while they watched gay porn. Like, where, you know. 
Jason was like jerking off dogs. Like, oh, this this guy's savage. I, I wish I had gone out with Jason Howard instead. It's like you were sort of a member of his whack pack at the time. True. It's like she went out with, you know, high pitched Eric and then was like, <laughs> You put it on social media? <laughs> yeah, I never thought of it from that perspective. I mean, the denting happened. Karma's a bitch. Yeah, yeah. The denting happened three months later. <laughs> yeah. I, I deserved it. God kicked you in the head. Yeah, I, I needed it. I, I've always said that. Yeah, I needed a big ass whooping. Well, we have a lot of great calls today going down memory lane, which I know will spur tons of discussions. Are we doing, I mean, so we're recording, by the way, we're recording this on a Thursday for a Monday. No, today for, today's Wednesday. Sorry, today's Wednesday. According to this on Wednesday, we're recording tomorrow's episode Thursday, and this actually won't come out till Monday. Well, I'll be driving. So just in case anybody's confused yeah. about if something has happened in the world and we're not talking about it, you're like, how are you guys not talking about that? The whole White House is now under a blanket because the whole er, everybody has Corona. Yeah. Uh, so let's just maybe we should just do some things that will have happened by Monday. Like, congratulations to the NBA champion Los Angeles Lakers, LeBron. Uh, with Stop. His, You're going to jinx his, it. With his fifth NBA Finals MVP. It'll be his fourth. Right. His fourth. So, man. Man. Sorry. Where are you at today, Frano? Sorry. We got, I, I'm giving him one. I was trying to bump the number because I just did that in an argument with somebody on Twitter. Everybody goes three and six, three and six. I already bumped it to four and six in that argument. I was like four and six, asterisk, because I'd already assumed that he had won this one. And then I bumped it again in my head right now to five and five and six. Still arguing, people. Yeah. I mean, there's some things. I, I don't. My thing now is I don't do the multiple replies. Yeah. But occasionally I'll still do the one reply. You never will stop. Can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to some of these calls. Okay, let's let's turn the sound on first. Classic Ruther. We're doing the calls, and I don't even have my sound turned on. This first one is definitely one of my favorite Smut Studio memories. Hey, Joe, oh, Andy. Tony from uh, PA. My favorite uh, Savage Town memory would be the time Yoshi hit the homeless man on the bike uh, outside of Ruther's apartment. Uh, fucking classic. Classic Yoshi. And then they come to find out, like, the cops actually get a hold of him, like, pictures and a statement. But, yeah, that's fucking classic moment in Savage Town history, but stay dirty, boys. Can you imagine if Yoshi came through Venice now? Oh, my God. It'd be like Grand Theft Auto. He'd be, he'd, yeah. he'd have, you know, it'd be like a hunter who has antlers on his wall. He'd, <laughs> he'd have, like, he's like, I got that one on uh, Pacific. I got that one on uh, Venice Way. This guy right here, uh, this is a twofer I got on Abbot Kinney. Antlers. It is so out of control. I posted this on Tuesday, so we're going to have to go way back by the time this is posted. Tuesday of last week, the infamous Survivor Hut was lit on fire. That we've talked about many times on the show in the last couple months. That There's, there's, a, there's a fork in the road in Venice, and, and where, the, where the fork is, there's like a, an island yes. bet between, you know, the street, they, the two streets converge. And there's a split, and there's an island. There's basically like a three-sided island, and a homeless person turned it into a straight-up survivor hut. It looks like it was nice. Yeah, it had walls. It had rope, like it had rope tie downs. Artwork, artwork, electricity. I think I saw a TV on in there one time. I don't know if he was running a generator, if he was running a wire from out of the ground or something like that. You put on. Or you just sent it to me. You haven't put it on social media. Or did I, you? I did. Oh, you did. I replied to the previous Survivor tweets from August. You know how you hit the reply. Yeah. With an update, 
because I got in my car yesterday, and ironically, I swear to God I'm not making this up. When I plugged in my phone to my Apple CarPlay, the playlist that I had on recently was an 80s playlist, and it was in the middle of Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire. I am not making this up. And I saw a giant, you know, thing of smoke in the distance. And as I'm leaving my garage, I thought, I don't know where that's at. Little did I know, it was the survivor hut on fire, and I filmed it. I just pulled my car out of the side. I didn't care. Middle of the road. And you said to me yesterday, you're like, I think somebody lit it on fire. And I was like, well, he had a barbecue grill in a house made of wicker. Like, maybe he lit it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> like, to me, that is essence. That this I mean, is if you, you watch Survivor, they have their little huts, and then they do, they have their fire out of their hut. Yeah. I mean, he was, uh, unless he was do, trying to do some sort of, uh, you know, unless he's like a guru or a Sherpa or something like that, he was trying to do like, you know, the heat huts. I don't think you should put a gas barbecue uh, inside your wicker hut. And for the record, that looked like a nice grill. Yeah. He definitely stole it from somebody. Yeah. But that is so fitting that we're wrapping up Dirty Sports in Venice, Savage Town. With all the homeless stories, and that that guy's house goes in flames. But the Yoshi story, dude, I, it is one of the funniest things. I will obviously never forget getting in his car. He does a U turn because I show him, hey, you know, we, we can go park over here. And it was like it happened in slow mo. Yoshi guns it down Mildred, which I don't know why. Guns it. The homeless guy comes along on his bike, clearly wanted to get hit. And when that dude got hit, it was slow motion. He, uh, him, I, I'll never forget him flying in the air over the handles of his bike. And Yoshi was, all, Yoshi was freaking out, and I was so calm. And he, he kept saying, you were like Bill Belichick in a game. Because, you know, Yoshi loves the sports references, yeah. especially Patriots. Yeah. I said, dude, I was calm because this isn't my first time dealing with these idiots. Yeah. But the fact that they found Yoshi. So funny. Meanwhile, the, uh, you know, Interpol still can't find him for the murder of his of his mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He gets one homeless guy in Venice. They're at his door two days later. Meanwhile, he's been on every single comedian's <laughs> podcast in Los Angeles saying he murdered his stepmom. That's a great point. I mean, they can. And then I kick her teeth in. <laughs> and, like, no one can find him. Dude, Tupac was shot in the middle of the Las Vegas Strip. Yeah. They don't know where that guy is. They find Yoshi from evading Mildred like that. Yeah. Unbelievable. You want to go on to. Uh, Let's do it. Some more calls. I love it. Oh, these are great. I'm really going to enjoy this. What's up, Joe and Andy? This is Mark from Wisconsin calling in. Sorry in advance if this goes a little over the time limit. <laughs> Just wanted to read a comment that I posted on the YouTube video of last Thursday's episode. It's about my smut studio memories, and I think it sums my thoughts up pretty well. So here we go. As someone who has watched us listen to all 664 episodes of the Dirty Sports Podcast, Plus, every Dent Report and Dirty Slides episode, it's strangely emotional for me that we've only got one or two more episodes left of the iconic Smut Studio, ever. From cutting up pieces of the Smut Couch to sell to the dirt balls, the makeover from the Smut Shack into the Smut Studio, to live YouTube unboxings of paintings of Joe and Andy as mythical creatures, all while some guy blows leaves right outside the window. <laughs> the Smut Studio may be going away. <laughs> You can never take away the memories like the two of you going live on Periscope after Carson Palmer self-destructed in the playoffs, just as Prey Nostradamus predicted, late-night recordings after an NFL Sunday where the show goes completely off the rails because of how high you guys are, that NBA All-Star Saturday Night live stream, the one time where there was a 40-minute pre-show because Ruther forgot the SD card was already plugged into the laptop, and that one time Yoshi ran over a homeless guy right outside Andy's mm -hmm. apartment. I could probably go on forever about all the memories the show has created all in this one location. I'm looking forward to what's to come for DSPN, but I will miss the Smut Studio and all its glory. 
It will be a new era when the podcast is no longer coming to you live from Venice Beach, California. Stay dirty, boys. The, that that was like a, a Chris Connolly ESPN report. Like that was that was well written. Very well written. This guy, he should he should be doing intros for uh, you know. And we're here for the NBA Finals, Game 7. Just a quick look back. All that these teams have been through. I saw that on YouTube because he posted that last Thursday. Very eloquently said. Couldn't agree more. I mean, brought back. I forgot. Like, I forgot about the Carson Palmer periscope after, excuse me, after the meltdown in the NFC Championship against the Panthers yep. who made the Super Bowl that year. Which we we recently referenced on the show after I watched. <laughs> that came up again recently because I watched Carson Palmer, It's a Football Life, and they went through his, like, glorious return from the Cardinals and uh, on the Cardinals, and then they were like, and in the NFC Championship game, it wasn't to be. And you're like, whoa, 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 he turned the ball over seven times. It wasn't to be. That was the, that was the years when I was battling with some of, like, at the time prior to it, some of our my favorite fans, like uh, like Jacob Faith, and what was the kid Patrick Sullivan, from uh, two guys who are Arizona Cardinals fans, who literally like decided that in that moment it was like no, if pra- like I'm off the Prano train if he's not on board for Carson Palmer NFL MVP, and I was like guys, you are r- for two guys who probably should never drink alcohol again. You are in for a rude awakening. You guys will be both be in rehab in in early February after Carson Palmer implodes in the playoffs. Yeah, take it from a uh, former Cincinnati Bengals fan. It was bound to happen. So many great memories, though. Yeah, that was a that was a great recap. Yeah, NFL sa- or NBA All Star Saturday night. That's gone forever. I don't even remember what was said, but I know you it was don't want to remember. Yeah, you do not want to cancel. Canceled. I mean, canceled. That one. Oh, yikes! You, you, you might be put on death row for that one, Prano. I, I honestly don't even remember like the ballpark it was in, and let's not, let's not, let's not talk about it. <laughs> let's not, let's not go. Well, it was like this. Well, we won't. Uh, but I'm laughing thinking about. I love his reference to the late Sunday nights where you and I, dude, you know what the craziest part is? Again, the neighbors, what are they thinking on like those Sunday nights where we're screaming at each other about Eli or Russell Wilson or Ryan Fitzpatrick? They're probably like that one guy is always right. (laughs) You're unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Well, we got to get to a Hall of Fame dirt ball. I wonder if any of your neighbors have ever like heard anything and then like thought about it later on. Like, do you think there was any there was any guys who live like eight apartments away who watched that NFC Championship game? Or like that that one really loud dude is right. Carson Palmer really did fucking implode. Oh, I forgot to tell you, my apartment the complex manager mentioned you. She's not a fan. Uh, what? How so? So she came in. You know, we have to do a checklist. What does that even mean? You're going to love this. So checklist, whatever, for leaving. By the way, I'm getting charged $125 for the paint, which like, whatever. So ridiculous, but I don't care. You know, it, yeah. they're taking it out of my deposit. She goes, yeah, I, was, I listened to an episode in the last couple months and uh, I really didn't like what your co-host had to say about having sex with police officers' wives. Oh, that's so exciting! That, I, I mean, of all the things it could be, I, I was, I was is, laughing. I am so happy right now. I thought she was gonna. She didn't like the look of me. No. She didn't like me parking in the garage. She listened to an episode and she didn't like this. She didn't like that. I mean, nothing's. I am so happy where this went. And she also didn't get like the essence of comedy right and a bit it's one of my favorite bits i've ever done (laughs) let's hear from ct is she does she have a uh any sort of police uh ties not to my knowledge 
I thought that was funny though. Like yeah. that's just a random thing for her to of say. All the things, yeah. Yeah. Hey, how how have the police been with helping you uh, keep Savage Town safe, lady? Yeah. You guys put up you guys put up a broken umbrella, <laughs> and you stuffed it between some bushes <laughs> because you can't like because if homeless people climb the fence like it's World War Z and start sleeping in the pool, you can't do anything. You can't call the police because the police are like. That's Venice. Yeah, it's Ruther dressed as Lieutenant Dangle is the police. Yeah. The like the the LAPD Pacific Division is basically the what's up with that sketch from SNL with Keenan Thompson. Homeless people live in your pool? What's up with that? Yeah. They got nothing. Let's hear from CT, Hall of Fame Dirtball. Ruther, Crano. DT formerly from Seattle here, lifelong Seattle Kraken fan. You know, one of my biggest regrets in life is not being able to ever visit the Smut Studio. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be glorious. Now it never happened. Is he crying? But there's always a chance. There's always a hope. There's always a dream that one day it will return. But thank you for all the years of memories, laughs, and Fun, good times at the Smut Studio. I know the Dirty Sports is far from over. We're just moving on to a new chapter. I'm glad to hear that Joe's finally coming around to realize that Mr. Unlimited is one of the greatest quarterbacks in NFL history. Well, that's I think that's what got me started listening to the show way back in 2014. I heard some dumbass on a podcast trashing Russell Wilson, and I knew he was the greatest. And I had to speak up and speak out. But guys, Andy, I love you guys. You're the best. Stay dirty. Go Cougs. Fuck the Huskies. Peace out. I mean, CT's been with us from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. I I fully agree with him, too. It's like, it's chapters, you know? CT formerly from Seattle. This is, this, you know, there will be some sort of return, like, like professional sports returning to Seattle. And by the way, I know that the Seahawks and the, uh, the Mariners never left, but you know you lost the Supersonics, and now you have the Kraken. You have the Kraken, just come come back. Well, and also, you're still in L.A. Yeah, it's like I was saying in dinner last night. It's like Drew was like, "Dude, this is great. Not great, but he's like, I'm gonna miss you going to Cincinnati." But he goes, "With you and Joe doing the show, I he's like, I already know you." You're going to come out for weeks at a time. Yeah. And because of dirty sports, it's not like, oh, bye for it. This isn't a bye forever. Yeah. L.A. situation. Um, yeah, I look forward to, uh, you know, packages showing up at my apartment and you being like, I've sent the picture of me as a merman to your place. We'll need it when I arrive in two weeks for. We're re- redoing the smut studio in your guest room. But CT has been so great. He has literally been taking care of Joe and I for five plus years. And we can't thank him enough. And CT, not just that, donations, Venmo donations, tons of other support sending us stuff. And, and and he he is like so many of you guys who I just can't keep thanking. Be, like, I can't thank you guys enough. I truly can't because there's been so much avid support. And look, I'm not going to lie. The, 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 here, here's the dirt ball to me. Like, you guys are weird as shit. You are. But so am I. Like, you're you're me. Like, like in a weird way. Like, I look in the mirror. Wouldn't you agree, Prano? And he's, he's shaking his head. Yeah, you are the king of the dirt balls. Yeah, so I'm like, this isn't me knocking you guys. Like, I'm you. You're me. So you have a soft side like me. You have a weird side. You have a crazy side. And I love all that. All that, everything that encompasses the dirt ball. And uh, we'll, we'll we'll hear from, uh, sp- speaking of, like, like we'll hear, what, what do we want to do? I just want to correct CT on yeah. something, though. Because I, I know he was around pretty early. I think he, I think CT's fandom predates my Russell Wilson truthing. 
I think 2014. The early I was a Russell Wilson slurper early on. No, you were not. I was not on this show. Go, I bet you if you go back to the beginning, I bet you if you go back to because we started right after their first Super Bowl. Or right, right in that time, right. The first episode was the Monday after the championship games, right? So of of their Super Bowl winning season, correct? The show started in January of 2014. Yeah, did they win the Super Bowl that year? Yeah, we we did. We started yeah, the show. Right. The, the I guarantee you, and we all those episodes are gone, but I guarantee you, I was a positive Russell Wilson fan then. Because I've always been very positive about him as a player. I just think that the Super Bowl, the the consecutive Super Bowl runs, everybody decided to hoist him up as sort of the man that was responsible. I I, I, I disagree. I don't think many people did. Obviously, I was a slurper very early on. Um, His trajectory is very nice right now. And that's all I'm going to say. Okay. It's extremely nice. Yeah. Where he's headed. Like all time. But they are in a tough conference. Aaron Rodgers is right up there as far as this year's MVP. Right now it's Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson. You you don't have your boy Josh Allen in there. He I'm sorry, and I forgot about Josh Allen. I put him below those two. But he's right there. You know, it's crazy because, like, Mahomes on Monday, like, the the, the Patriots, I mean, it's the Patriots as well, but, like, they kept him in check. Yeah. And he should have had two bad picks. Yeah. Like, two drops. But, uh, but obviously, Mahomes is still going to be right there as well. So, it'll be fun. I want to read something that someone tweeted. Denton G. When I see Denton, I'm just like, oh, come yeah. on. He says, uh, there has never been a better podcast in the history of podcast. And there's never been a better podcast in the history of podcast. And I think you forget a word, but this was my introduction, actual introduction to us. The first impression that got me hooked. Not going to call him for the final episode for the shack, but here's my throwback. Holes in the bucket. It's the Joe Prano does the Kobe Bryant shot challenge. Classic. Yeah, the holes in the bucket because I vomited into like a Home Depot paint bucket, which I don't even know why it was here. The but, mayor, but it was cracked. The mayor. The whole bucket. So it was just there's puke coming out of the cracked holes of the bucket. I mean, that, that's probably it sucks because we didn't have that on video. That's probably one of the greatest feats in not just sports podcast podcast history. I mean, just all the people that were involved in that. I mean, I remember Laz like showing up because he was worried I was gonna die. Luke was here. Luke was here. You and Luke were like the parents arguing over a child. You're pushing him too hard. No, he's gotta stop. Luke's one of those guys. He he's got a little joker to him. He likes to watch the world burn. I think he would have I think he knew it would have been a a boost for the Dirty Sports Podcast if I had died of alcohol poisoning. Oh, my air. DMs that night. People, uh, mo- most dirt balls, any DMs I got that night were not happy with me. You got to cut him off. You got to cut him off. He's going too far. He's going to die. He's going to end up in the hospital. And I, I thought I handled it well. Like, I, I knew. But you've always, we've we've been friends for a long time. I We've drank around each other for a long time. You know that I keep it with with very rare occasions does it just go totally off the rails. And that night I prepared. I was set to do that. If I if if you just show up and drink forty shots of Buffalo Trace and Fireball on a whim, it's gonna be bad for everybody. Yeah. But if you prepare, you know it's a whole different story. Well, I also know, like you said, you can ha- like I can never handle alcohol. That's just the truth. And I would be out of control and reckless. And you were always composed. You remind me of my brother Greg, where I know times where he gets lit 
like times you could get lit. But you guys are mostly very composed and under control. Where like me is like a nightmare. My favorite thing about the uh, Kobe Bryant shot challenge, and and this is a, a reference to our good friends at Miller Lite. I love Miller Lite. I've always loved Miller Lite. I drink Miller Lite every single day, and sometimes the uh, you know sometimes the the douche bro beer heads will will come after us for our love of Miller Lite. It's like. Why aren't you drinking a... And I'm like, until you take 40 shots of alcohol during a NBA basketball game, don't come at me about my 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 alcohol-by-volume beer selections because this is the world's greatest pilsner. I don't care what anybody else says. Yeah, what a crazy night. Absolutely crazy night. Well, let's get to uh, some more calls. This is another call where a, a dirt ball is very open and honest how his rough drinking night was saved by. Ooh, I love these stories. Saved by us. What's up, Dirty Sports? It's Joey from Minnesota. Um, in honor of the last show at the Smut Studio, at the Smut Shack, I had to, excuse me, the Smut Studio, I had to tell a quick story <laughs> about something uh, that really just is so Dirty Sports most dirt ball shit ever and why I love you guys. Um, about three years ago, I was just in a real rough spot of my life, like doing drugs all the time, being crazy and shit. And I was in college. And one day while I was listening to Dirty Sports, all of a sudden I just hear, oh, I smell weed over here. And the next thing I know, there's two cops at my door arresting me because I live in South Dakota. And, I mean, it, you know, I really freaked out a lot. I was having the worst day ever. They made me walk home from the police department in my flip-flops after I got released. And I just remember feeling so bad, but turning on Dirty Sports on the way home. And um, it happened to be the episode where Joe talked about his brother coming on a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just the, the funniest shit ever and the laugh I needed. So I'll always remember that shit. Thank you, guys. I love you, Andy and Joe. Uh, stay dirty. What a <laughs> Of all the things, it was the episode where Joe talked about his brother coming on a turtle. Is that episode gone as well? It was, it was an episode. It was a bonus content when we went to San Francisco. Yeah. That was the same weekend I met met the girl on Bumble. Yeah, no, I remember. That was a wild weekend. That was that <laughs> was the girl whose husband jacked off their mastiff. Jesus Christ. That was when we were was that our first trip to San Francisco? Yeah, it was our first trip to San Francisco together. It was twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen. Is it was that when my brother was up there? Is that why we were talking about him? Is that the night we saw the vampires at the Tiki Lounge? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, what's the name of that place? The Tonga Room. Oh, that, that was the... And that's when we met Fat Jason Kidd. Yeah. Watch Prano watch baseball. In San Francisco. It was like straight out of the fan. Wow. Walking home in your flip-flops after getting busted just for smoking pot. It sounds like at home. Yeah some red state shit right there and then <laughs> he's got the john turtle revenge story i th that i edited that one before i put it up yeah so i think i don't know might still be out there either way we're definitely going to do a wu-tang thing sometime where we sell like all the dirty sports archives on a drive but you've got to sign a sign a thing like a non disclosure agreement that it'll net you can never share with anybody or never post it anywhere. I'm just gonna be And it'll probably be bought by the same guy, Martin Shkreli, who's in jail for get price gouging AIDS medication, will probably buy it. I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. There's a reason we had to do some things. <laughs> Is that really being honest? I'm gonna be vaguely honest with you guys. Th things happen. I don't I, like we got to make money. Th there's too much shit out there. I'm just going to be fully transparent. 
this depends on our livelihoods, and you can call us sellouts, and that's fine. Say it what you want, but I got to eat. Joe's got to eat. We got to pay rent. Like, certain things had to be privatized so that we can continue getting sponsors. Look, it sucks. I'm just going to be blunt. I, I still feel like we're a edgy show. Yeah. We still go there, but there's some stuff in the past. Eek. Look, I have a feeling uh I have a feeling if Eminem could make some old lyrics private right now, he would. Yeah. And uh look, I look, it is what it is. So, that that's my take on it. And I I like your idea of selling it to somebody. That's a classic. The thought of having like the worst night ever and then you throw on your headphones and you hear a story about someone jacking off on a someone's sister's pet turtle as a revenge act. It, it kind of touches my heart. Yeah. John and Tony need their own podcast <laughs> for just all this <laughs> lunatic shit they got into while I was like in college. Yeah. Well, we're discussing. Not there to chaperone them. We're discussing changes. This is perfect. Ch -ch changes. Discussing the, the evolution that I've had. What's up, Joe and Andy? This is Tom, New England Dirtball. Uh, my favorite smut studio memories, uh, man, going way back. When I first started listening, I found out, I found uh, Ruther on Twitter, and I saw his YouTube videos. And, uh, yeah, those were those were hilarious, Ruther rants. And it's just crazy to see, you know, how Andy has gone from bashing Whole Foods and Trader Joe's to, like, loving it and how much he's just changed. Uh, my favorite one was the uh, Dur Doris Burke rant and her, her 12-inch horse dick. <laughs> and those were, man, it's just been crazy just seeing Ruther change. Uh and my other favorite memory has to be the 2015 uh, uh, playoff for the uh, Mets. I mean, that was probably one of the most, only times where either of your guys' teams were in, like, a real legit championship run. And it was, it's honestly, it got me becoming a Mets fan, and I don't even like the Mets. But that was probably one of the craziest uh, postseason runs ever for a team and the fact that it was Prano's Mets was crazy in and of itself because ever since then they haven't done shit but yeah neither of uh, any of your other teams so anyway stay dirty uh my condolences to Ruther RIP and also Maddie Goldberg is a fucking idiot who who would have thought the Patriots were going to tank at the beginning of the year nobody nobody that that's just spreading this misinformation for the Patriots, okay? <laughs> Bye. He leaves this heartfelt message. I know. And then just takes I love it. I, I said the same thing to Maddie. I'm like, who signs Cam Newton to tank? No one ever thought they were tanking. Only Goldberg. If you don't go 16 and now, that's tanking for Bill Belichick. 12 and 4, 11 and 5. He's going to be drafting in the low 20s for the first time in his career. Tank for the second best quarterback in the draft. <laughs> Goldberg. Classic. Uh, There's no dirty sports without Goldberg. No. And uh I I mean that that you know, the mention of the twenty fifteen Mets run, we we can't gloss over the fact that that was let Prano pitch here. Of course. People forget the Mets have one legitimate run. In 30 years, they made the World Series against the Yankees, but that didn't really count. And in 30 years, and it's because they let me throw a pitch, and now and then they just go on like nothing happened. Like we weren't, they weren't even in first place when I threw that pitch. Yeah, it was late June. It was against the Reds. And what has happened since then? They have not had any sort of glory. It things have only gone bad. Chris Taps Porzingis, who threw the second pitch that day, has been traded out of the city. It's like, guys, you want New York to burn down? Because I'm not saying I would have stopped coronavirus from happening, but I'm just saying, let me throw another first pitch. Yeah. 
what's been the most interesting evolution of me? He discussed my evolution, and I totally forgot about the Ruther Rants videos. Thank God I took those down. Bro, I used to do, what, the Ruther Rants, and then the going off on, like, Tinder Girls profiles? Yeah. That's one thing I had foresight on, because I was way ahead of the cancel curve. When I got hired to work on Lance Bass's radio show on Sirius XM, I remember looking at those videos... I started working for him in January 2015. I remember it was like that first week. I'm looking at those videos thinking, you should probably take these down. And I probably would have been fine because, like, you know, the cancel culture really didn't start hitting, I'd say, till like, 2018. Also, what are they canceling you from? Lance's radio show? I mean. I, feel, I, I honestly feel like Lance's radio show would have had, like, a – uh, sit down with like an on-air discussion about your your toxic masculinity more than they would have like canceled you and thrown you off the air. You make a good point. Yeah, you're right. What's crazy is I even think about bits we did on that show. Never could we do now. Yeah. Like like that's that's bits that me and two gay guys are doing. That now would be like, oh, these guys are canceled. Or things we said. Yeah, it's it's, it's it's ridiculous how the world. It'll all swing back. It'll, I agree. It, it'll all we'll we'll come back. It'll be a positive. It'll be a positive change, but it'll swing back a little bit. I think there. You know, it's a good thing to purge the world of like I don't know rapists. Sure. You know what I mean, uh, violent racists and homophobes. It's like once we rid of the world of that, like the the. I, 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 at least I hope. Yeah. I hope that there will be a softening. It will. On whatever. And also, I mean, we, we, we've talked so much about, like, the politics of everything now. I, I have, you know, and, and I'm happy to talk to anybody about it because people have hit me up recently, dirt balls and the such, and be like, oh, you've, I feel like you've gone more the way of this and that. I'm like, no. Like, th- things politically have kind of all gone as I thought they would. In the last election, where I was like, "Well, if Trump wins, at least everybody will be psycho about can't you know keeping an eye on the president, hating everything he does, blah blah blah." And you know, you look at it; it's like now the the sort of cancel culture is on one side of the fence, and like the people that don't believe in science and like are super racist are on the other side. But as as the world gets as the politics of it swings back toward the middle everybody will calm down you'll start treating people who don't believe in you know climate change the same way that you'll treat people who are like everybody has to be canceled for everything as everything swings back toward the middle and you had to have this kind of thing happen i feel like those outside people i'm really hopeful in about three or four years all basically everybody that is vocal now, the out the like far on either side will just be looked at with disdain by everybody. Yeah. So what's been the craziest change that I've done? Well, I mean Or most surprising to you. I for sure think it's like f- f- most surprising to me, it's like you like suddenly cleaning up your apartment, that's just like maturing. And obviously you had the alcohol thing. There, there was the maturing, you know, going through like not not having like the hot take, like aggressive kind of like frat boy comedy. That's just maturing. But I mean, being like Mr. Like we should machine gun everybody with a kale smoothie, like all that. Like you are now Mr. You are Trader Joe. You are you. <laughs> Like they're gonna have you're gonna go to Cincinnati and open a Trader Andy's. You're like the the swing to the health conscious reading books about Zen. Reading books, going to float labs, the whole the whole like and I think that's good. It's good and it's certainly been healthy for you. But like the rage like I can't wait for you to go to Cincinnati and start drinking a cup of, a cup of coffee every morning. You're just going to be like, yeah, love coffee. <laughs> like the things that you used to rage on that now, I mean, nothing, nothing more uh, like I feel like 
the tale if we wrote a story about the evolution of, of Andy Ruther, it could just be called like Andy Ruther and Tequila Organica. Like just that's a perfect example. You're like burn the place to the ground. They don't have burritos, and you're like, you know, it's pretty healthy. I like it. It's right across the street. Well, they added burritos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. I I I remember. You, I mean, there was a time where basically your like dietary thing was like, if you're not eating Taco Bell four times a week, you're gay. <laughs> Never and it's that. like, shut up. I mean, that, that's that's basically like that's 2014 Andy Ruther. It's like now you can't say any of that stuff. You can't call someone gay and you can't eat Taco Bell four times a week. God, I couldn't tell you last time I had Taco Bell. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I, I can. I There was no food. That's literally the equivalent of Jeff Foxworthy going like, I don't know the last time I accused somebody of being a redneck. Like it was literally the soul of your comedy at one point. It was not you. <laughs> I did have so many Taco Bell tweets, so many. There was one time where I looked it up and I was like, in the last in the last year, you've written about it seventy five times. God, it's like once every four days. It is crazy, man. Like like you read, you know, I'm big on journaling, and I've been like rereading all stuff. I've journaled for like twenty years, dude. Some of the stuff I was writing, oh my god. I look back on it and I'm like, dude, you've done such a 180 on, like, I've gotten so, it's almost like hippie-esque into all that stuff, into what I believe. I did finish Courtesy of Stanga, because he goes, you should watch that, I know you'd like it. I watched the uh, the PBS documentary on Buddha, narrated by Richard Gere. Okay. Like, this is where I'm at. Yeah. It's really good, though. Like, that's a whole other area pbs the only place richard gear can work anymore because he hates china <laughs> i mean seriously they canceled richard gear i know hollywood canceled richard gear did they talk about that no no because it's a pbs documentary they don't push the buttons yeah it's unbelievable all right let's hear from i mean what i love the uh, especially going back to the dietary thing though like you were so hard on nick when he was here and meanwhile like the idea that three and a half years ago you were like of you getting up and eating a cheese stick out of your fridge is like totally reasonable. No, not three and a half years ago. Five years ago. I think. Yeah, no, I've been Trader Joe. I, I've actually been Trader Joe's for a good eight years now. Like I remember when I started going to Trader Joe's, but I wasn't more of the organic, healthy type. Unbelievable. <laughs> Jacob Faith, blast from the past. So we just talked about Jacob Faith. Not it, If you're listening to this, it would have been two episodes ago now. He was having his dirty sports tattoo removed. From his ass. From his ass. Which we should say, it's like, I thought it was absurd that you got it. So the idea that you're getting it removed is totally reasonable. Sure. Like, I'm not hurt by that at all. Uh, I actually thought it was more ridiculous that you would ever think to do that. But, uh, the, you know, the, the real question of it was, like, Jacob Faith, where is Jacob Faith? He's still alive. Like, what's going on with him now? And the, the first update that we've had from Jacob Faith in forever is he is alive and well and is probably is now, like, turning his life around to the point where he is getting his ass tattoo removed yeah and jacob faith was an original dirt ball he was our first hockey correspondent one of our first two hockey correspondents that's they right They split the conferences that's right he would call in lit from earl's wine bar in regina saskatchewan yeah he and he would do the western conference of the nhl and jake bruder <laughs> who was a 15 year old trumper who sadly he's 35 now yeah, he, he's 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 35 and he's currently quarantining because he works as an intern for the proud boys for, for, yeah <laughs> who works as an intern at the white house and literally everybody that he's been in a room with in the last six weeks now has coronavirus by the way the bruder brothers were at the mets pitch yeah okay so let's hear from jacob faith with an update Hey, boys, Jacob Faith calling here from Regina, Saskatchewan. Long time, no talk. 
Um, to address the absence on Twitter, you know, I'm still a big fan of the show. I just got myself off Twitter. I got no time for beefing with other dirt balls, um, spending all my time. Oh, oh, shit. Sorry. Hold on. We'll start that one again. Hey, boys. Jacob Pace calling here from Regina, Saskatchewan. Long time, no talk. Um, to address the absence on Twitter, you know, I'm still a big fan of the show. I just got myself off Twitter. I got no time for beefing with other dirt balls, um, spending all my time scrolling. Um, and, uh, yeah, as for the ass pat, <laughs> I got a big ass fucking mirror to the right side of my bed, and every time I'm doing doggy, it's off the end of my bed because it's against the left side. Just trying to paint you a picture here, and you know I'm looking right into the mirror to my right, and uh, the ass pad is trying to move. It's kind of more on the right hip, honestly, than it is an ass pad. And it's uh, it's done its rounds, boys. It was fun while it lasted, and I appreciate the memories. Um, Andy, I appreciate you having you back here. Uh, fuck 2020. Um, condoms are for my Arizona Cardinals. You can keep fucking me every single week. I wouldn't be surprised if we lost to the Jets. Um, stay dirty, boys. Well, considering this air on, this will air on Monday, congratulations on not losing to the Jets. <laughs> congratulations on blowing out the Jets. Now... I still have questions. Like, are you going full Christian Bale, American Psycho, during sex and watching yourself? I think he is. Is that Th- what's happening yeah. here? Yeah, sounds, sounds like he is. Because for me, now I have a mirror on my closet, and I like it. I'm not going to lie. It's, you know, it's used during the sexual activity. It's more of like watching the girl. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying, like, like me, I think mirrors can be... Like hot during sex, but like hot take, <laughs> hot take, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I'll just shut up. <laughs> I have no problem with you removing the tattoo. It had a good six-year run, five-year run, whatever it was. I am curious about that process. To, legit. How does that the work? The removal? Yeah. I think it's a, a a fairly long process. I think it's like, I've heard it's like three or four visits. visits? Yeah. yeah. Um, now, the question is, two questions. One, will we ever do another Dirtball Rankings, you think? It's a great question. And two, does Bard automatically leapfrog into a top ten because he's the sole member with a Dirty Sports tattoo? And three, do you think anybody else will ever get a Dirty Sports tattoo? I don't think anybody will. I don't know. Both were good, smart tattoos on the ass. When Aronofsky, whose call we're going to go to next, has to get his Ryan Fitzpatrick tattoo, maybe he can, like, put little... DS messages in the beard. Yeah. We can do that. Before we get to Kyle's call, today's episode of Dirty Sports is proud to be presented by FanDuel Fantasy. Dirtball's NFL Week 6 is here, and we're entering our fantasy lineups on FanDuel. You guys should be doing that as well. Come play along on the snake drafts, which are the simplest ways to try daily fantasy draft live, just like season-long fantasy, but with winners every game day. The best of seasonal draftings with DFS all in one. This is how it works. You find a daily snake draft. You draft your team live. The draft starts as soon as the contest fills. You and your opponents will draft six players in a six-round draft with 30 seconds per draft. Unlike other FanDuel contests, there is no salary cap. I love the snake draft. That's one of the things, Joe, that is very easy and fun for all the dirt balls to do. They should sign up for that. And for anyone who wants to make a deposit, FanDuel is offering up to $500 bonus instantly when you make your first deposit with our 20% match. 
Go to FanDuel.com forward slash dirty or download the FanDuel Fantasy app to play now. That is FanDuel.com forward slash dirty. FanDuel, more ways to win. Okay, so you teased it. Let's hear from Kyle Aronofsky. What's going on, boys? Kyle Aronofsky coming back once again from beautiful Tom's River, New Jersey, home of the 1998 Little League World Series champions. Just listening to the latest podcast and uh, thinking of some smut studio memories. And I actually, I think I might have been the last dirtball to go to the uh, the smut studio. So I was there in late December, like five days before Christmas, to uh, see a concert. I saw the My Chemical Romance reunion show out there. Um, had met up with Jesus, Jesus, and then we went to the smut studio and met up with Ruther and Aaron, and then we went out and got some drinks with Tug as well. Um, and this was when there was a hole in the bathroom. I don't <laughs> remember the story of well, why that was there, but what a fucking disaster. So... Um, no, it was, it was, I never realized how small it was. So I, it's unbelievable that you guys got so much out of such a small space. Um, and I think my favorite contribution to the Smut Studio was the Kellen Winslow uh, bobblehead. So I hope that gets a nice uh, a nice spot in uh, wherever Ruth is going to be living, if he's going to go back to the to Wall Street or uh, an apartment or something. So um, thank you guys for all the memories, and thank you, Andy, for always uh, being cool with the dirt balls and, and – you know, for a crisp $100 bill, being able to go up there, even though I don't think he charged me. Um, and thank you to Prano as well. Sorry again about uh, killing a hooker in your uh, apartment, allegedly. Uh, these things get out of control sometimes, and bitches don't want to take uh, don't want to take no for an answer. So. All right, boys, yes. talk to you later. Now, Kyle's had a few good contributions. The Kellen Winslow Jr. bobblehead's amazing. He's also responsible, or his girlfriend at the time, the George W. Bush bobblehead, also the Marvin Lewis, and there might be one other. Yeah. He, he's been a key contributor. Yeah, some good good bobblehead support for sure. Um Will there be a uh are you gonna are you gonna turn an area into the dirty sports lounge there? Well, it's gonna be interesting because I am gonna move back to my parents' house and talk about a transformation from a tiny little apartment to a four bedroom house with half an acre in the backyard. So I'm going to talk to my brothers. Um, you know, obviously I, I still have a lot of respect for my parents' house, but there's, there's space. There's space. You got a lot of stuff here. I think all this, all this decor, you know, we're going to, we're going to split up some decor. Hopefully it'll help me improve my dirty sports background when we do it on zoom. But also, I just think you could use a lot of this stuff, and just to show that that you know honor for your parents, we have two great Walt with dirt balls pictures, two legendary ones. We you, do. You mix those in. I agree. For the dirty sports wall. I agree. Yeah. Coming no. to you live from Walt Street, in Cincinnati, Ohio. Walt had a soft spot for the dirt balls. I I remember the night. Um, that all the dirt balls came back after the Reds pitch. I was pretty annoyed. I'll just be blunt. I was like, I don't want to deal with this shit right now. And Walt was like, No, no, let them stay and drink in the backyard. Make sure nobody drinks and drives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Uh, but Walt had a soft spot for the dirt balls. Well, I think, you know, that even that morning when. He who shall not be named showed up. Your parents were like totally thrown off. But then during the course of that day, we go to the pitch. Everything people chanting Walt's name. Yeah, the whole thing. I think you. I think you found out he's a little bit of a celeb. Yeah, but they also. I forgot, Joe. They did that at the Mets pitch too. Yeah, we're chanting Walt's name. Yeah, and John Boy sent me a real nice message after my dad passed away because he still has – that's his profile pic is my dad and him and what was ever Walt's first, as he called it, Snelfy. Snelfy. It's <laughs> incredible. My dad thought it was called Snelfy. And, yeah. Look, I'd like to do something. There is a bedroom, which you've slept in, in the basement. 
which had been recently redone. My dad had actually redone the basement with my mom. So the basement looks real nice. I also have a lot of potential to make, I don't know. Again, I, I got to talk to my brothers, but uh, I could really transform it into like a badass apple Applebee's. Yeah. Like my own Buffalo Wild Wings with the TV situation in the basement. Um, but those are details that, that, that'll be worked out. Coming to you live from Walt's basement, Cincinnati, Ohio. I feel like I would have to move that picture, the one of the bar of my oldest brother, Elliot, with Chris Collinsworth. Almost would have to make a cameo. I think it absolutely should. Yeah. All right, let's hear from some more dirt balls. Let's go to a dirt ball. This isn't the easiest call to hear, but you'll get the gist of it. It's about how his ex-wife hated dirty sports. It's great to hear she's your ex. Luther, Frano, what's up? This is Chris from Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, just wanted to drop a quick line. Uh, final week in the Smut Studio. You guys are awesome. Thanks for just providing just a shit ton of uh, entertainment and content uh, from the Smut Studio for listening back in, damn, like, it was probably 2016, 2017, uh, and everybody was talking about this other sports podcast and network, and I was like, man, fuck that. Fuck that bar school shit. It's a DS. Dirty sports is where it's at, uh, and I've been able to turn a few people on to you guys uh, and the Smut Studio over the years. You guys have helped me a ton uh, going through a pretty nasty divorce right now. Uh, one of the things that my ex hated was the Dirty Sports Podcast. And so, fuck that bitch, because guess what? I'm going to listen to it all day. Uh, I'll probably listen to it uh, when I show up to court to whack the floor with her, because uh, she's insane. <laughs> anyway, you guys are awesome. Fuck the Houston Texans. Fuck the Jacksonville Jaguars. Fuck the Indianapolis Colts. Titans. Tighten up as long as we get rid of COVID because that's <laughs> bullshit. Stay dirty, boys. I love it. How many wives hate us? Probably a lot. But there's there's some female wife dirt balls I know yeah. for sure. Yeah, I feel like I feel like if trying to put myself in their high heels, if you will, try to put myself why, in their. Why shoes. are you gender assuming yeah. that a woman wears high heels? Look. I'm not even going to go there right now. <laughs> Try to put myself in their shoes of whatever gender style they prefer. I think if you get a snippet of the dirty sports, if you're the wife of a dirtball or the girlfriend of a dirtball, and you get a snippet of the dirty sports, depending on what snippet it is, there's a solid chance that you don't like us. But I truly believe if you're the wife of or the girlfriend of a dirtball, and you give it the full chance, if you listen to three consecutive episodes, I believe that you will appreciate us and, and the show. Yeah. What about the nut? Yeah. <laughs> what about the nut? You think how many people do you think have had sex while we're playing in the background? Not a lot, <laughs> right? It's probably minimal. Yeah, but there was we did have a dirt ball that said he used to do it all the time, right? I think that was Jacob Faith. Classic. He's like, uh, he went from having sex with us on to now not even wanting to think about us during sex. <laughs> Guys, uh, I'm going through a pretty severe medical procedure right now because uh, just thinking of you guys during sex is ruining my life. <laughs> All right, we got a couple more calls to get through. That's a, that's a bigger evolution up, than any you did. I uh, just wanted to get a last call in while you guys are uh, your last couple episodes there in person. Hopefully, you guys uh, continue, um, even though you're separated and you talked about that. Um, just want to say I've been listening to about the 30th episode, somewhere around there. Um, I see some of the pictures you guys post, third balls and stuff. I'm 35 years old. Um, so I wouldn't consider myself a dirtball. I've seen some of those guys, you know, oof, what a rough crowd. 
Um, You're a dirtball, bro. Two, two young kids, married, you know, a little overweight, but pretty good looking guy. And just a normal guy. And you guys are fucking, I love the show. Humble brag. Um, praying on the Yankee fans. We always shit on the Yankees. But, you know, Giants, Knicks, and I disagree with you a lot, but you're really funny. And, Ruther, you just, you're a great host, you know. When you guys are together, it's really good. Um, so just want to say, love the show. And after everything you guys have done, there's one thing I've learned in life. Never get really hammered in Southern California and use the N-word. Later, guys. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. He's talking about the dente. It did not happen. You have no idea what happened. I have no idea. <laughs> that definitely didn't happen, though. <sighs> we have an interesting thing with his call, though. And I noticed this, I remember, a couple times in Chicago. It's almost like the guy who denies that he's gay. Dude, you're a dirtball. Oh, I was like, what? Why are you, calling, why are you outing him? No, yeah, yeah. It, it's like the person who's in denial about their sexuality. Like, dude, if you listen to the show... I know what he's saying. Like there are, you talked about the political sphere. There are extreme dirtballs, and then yeah, you don't have to be an extreme dirtball. But like you listen to the show, you're a dirtball. Yeah, yeah. If you're a regular listener, you're a dirtball. And you've been calling on the show for years. Yeah. It doesn't. And, and, it doesn't and, mean you have to get an ass tat. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing is like it's it's the the vocal minority is the crazy. It's it's always the guys too are like I'm not really on Twitter. You know, I'm not really on social media, but I listen to every episode. It's like, dude, you're a dirtball. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like, what? No shame in it. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of shame in it, but there's. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are you hitting cars head on and then speeding off and then running into light poles? Right. No, you're not yeah. doing that. Knocking your teeth out after, you know, harassing a Jesus freak. I can't even remember his name. Branson? Branson went down so hard. Branson. Oh, my God. How about me that day? I couldn't handle the dirt balls, so I just left and went to have sex with the girl I met on Tinder. Yeah. Never forget dirt balls. Never forget who's here with you. Never forget who bails oh. and, and who's, who's lying over a carcass. I was... Me and I was with Nick Del Sandro that afternoon. That was and his buddy. That was September 2016. I think they gave me a ride to wherever I ended up next. Your probably your dad's house. No, I met you at the sandbar. Oh, the sandbar. My, yeah, my brother's bar. They brought a, They brought me the sandbar. That's right. Four years ago, I I was in a bad place, man. How so? Oh, I was like still like so torn up about my breakup with Jenny. That was like four years ago. And you were Tinder addicted? I wouldn't say addicted. Okay. I was binging. That that was actually that pitch I set up on my dad's birthday. Yeah. Which was kind of cool looking back on it. All right. We got one more call to get through. Ruther, Prano, it's your number one orphan dirtball, Morgan. What's up? Just giving some little dirtball memories. To conclude, the Smut Studio slash Shack, um, I remember when I have, had to give you guys some USC calls, got plastered, gave a little bit of USC updates, oh, yeah. and then Prano said I should stop using my parents' cell phone minutes to make the calls. <laughs> Trevor, our possibly disgraced former intern, had to let Prano know that I was indeed an orphan. To which Prano apologized. But it was still fucking funny as hell. I remember Trevor asking if it could be played on the show. I remember Prano DMing me saying that he went too far. It was fucking awesome. Anyway, condoms are for this call. Peace. Do you remember how bad his UFC calls were? Yeah. yeah. They were so bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, look, he didn't have parents to raise him. You know, you got to give a kid a break. Uh, I've, I've, uh, the soft side of Joe Prano. 
What? DMing him to apologize. I've, I have no recollection of it. But I've I've had many exchanges with Morphin uh, in the years since that happened. He's in he's in what you like to refer to as the Mean Girls chat. Um, he's a real fisherman. So uh, I've had I've had many exchanges with Morgan through the years. But I but I do remember yeah <laughs> mocking like how many calls when people call in does like the the topic of their parents even come up. It just so happens to come up with this kid, and he has no parents. <laughs> He's just uh, Oliver Twist. He was an orphan, right? Yeah. I'm thinking in my head, how many people are going to get that? Yeah. Is that a Dickens book? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Yeah, those calls were really bad. They, they were funny, though. You know, I take pride, and I think a fair amount of dirtballs do— we take this sick pleasure in just the bad calls. Oh, well, there was a time where you were really a Nazi about the calls. Wow, the minute you, roll. It wasn't just the minute thing. If their sound was bad, if their t- whatever, if they had a, if they won too many ums or uhs, you were just, just hammer them. Well, I've mellowed that out. Was pre, yeah, that was pre-laying in bubble baths or whatever you do and you know meditating. I but, s- you weren't watching Netflix documentaries on Buddha back then. I said this on the final Dent Report. You don't have fucking parents. I don't fucking care. Get a better fucking cell phone. <laughs> Suck Doris Burke's dick. Bye. I said this on the final Dent Report with Goldberg. I said, the things that have mellowed me out have been sensory deprivation, therapy, constant journaling, weed, and, like, exercise. Like, those five or six things have 100% mellowed me out. And I have to continue to do those things. Or lunatic, Ruther will be back. Andy, no chill Ruther. (laughs) God, I used to get mad at the dumbest shit. Yeah. Why? I I did snap a couple times recently. It's still under there. Yeah, but now it's mostly driving. Yeah, I've all I've never lost that edge. Yeah, the giving the finger, yelling at people, the quick honk, the Andy with the quick honk. I blame my dad, man. That's how he was. He was <laughs> he was like, I mean, a direct Walt quote is the most important part on a vehicle is the horn. You're like, what is it? The engine? Perno, I can't believe we're doing this, man. Those are the calls, and I apologize ahead of time if you left the call. Again, we're recording this on Wednesday, October 7th. So we're recording it a fair amount ahead of time because I'm going to be on the road when this airs, driving across the country in my little hatchback with my brother. And I'll be up in South Lake Tahoe on the uh, on the links at Edgewood Country Club. Edgewood Golf Course playing in their Boys and Girls Club golf tournament up there. So it's a nice little be a nice little uh Columbus Day break yeah. for us. So I mean this is it. This is the the final shebang of Shaboring. <laughs> Anytime I hear sh- anything, I just think Shaboring. Of dirty sports in the smart studio. But I think you know, I, I like what Kyle Aronofsky said that like we got the most out of this place. And it is surprising when people walked in here. I mean, we'll never forget when guys like Sean Merriman or Pat McAfee walked in. What about Ryan Grant's daughter is laying in your bed? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but even those guys, like, you could see they... they Two years ago, I live tweeted a day with a girl. She period blooded all over my bed. Yeah, relax while we interview your dad. Like we we've had some fun guests in here. We we've had people who'll be like, "This." Do you want a teddy bear or something that you can hold while you lay in my bed? Would you like a bobblehead of Kellen Winslow, multi elderly homeless rapist? <laughs> yeah, man, it'll always be the smart studio. Yeah. Or I just keep it. I honestly, the thing about the thing about Savage Town is, I'm pretty sure it'll be available. Yeah. I think they're. I think they're going to have some availability here for some time. They are. It's changing. Because they give people tours, and they're like, "What's that?" And they're like, "Oh, that's a broken umbrella that we're, 
<laughs> using a sort of a gun turret to keep the homeless people from bathing in the pool. You, what are all these blank spaces? Oh, those uh, they used to be barbecues. We've limited ourselves to one barbecue now. The rest of the barbecues we've given away to homeless people in the streets so that they can have them inside their wicker tents. It's so out of control, man. It's just so out of control here. I'm curious, like, where Venice in particular is going to be a year from now. Uh, yeah, I'm interested we, to see what happens with Venice as well. We I mean, you know, they talk about a lot of places like when certain businesses leave. What will the dirty sports leaving Venice do for it? I mean, I've left Venice. You're now leaving Venice. This has been the hub of the dirty sports. I mean, you talk about commerce leaving. Yeah. We have driven tourism to Venice Beach, California. Facts. Yeah. We've had dirt balls show up, hang out on the beach. Basketball courts. Basketball courts, do the whole thing. Videos from the beach. The economic impact. Yeah. What is the economic impact of the closing of the, of the Smut Studio? I would argue a little greater than Snapchat leaving. Slightly, yeah. Yeah. There's going to be no sheriff here. I, I, I have a feeling what happened on Market Street is going to happen on Mildred. Oh, my God. I drove by that yesterday. It, it is really crazy to think. When did Snapchat leave? It's got to be three years ago. I don't now. think it was that long. I think it was like two years ago. Okay, two years ago. That street was so pristine where Snapchat was located. Since they've left, it's a homeless utopia. Yeah. It's funny because that street has gone through so many. Like just in the time that I've been in my apartment down there, which was I was basically there five years. I was there in November 2015 to basically September 2020. November 2015? Might have been before that. Yeah. Yeah. November November 2015. Um, Market Street had Nicky's. Yeah. There was there was a bar there. It was like kind of this weird street. There's a lot, there's a lot of parking lots at the end. Then Snapchat literally took the whole street over. Everything stopped. They would like. They they had 24-hour security, multiple 24-hour security men on the streets. They added lights above it. They added lights above it. A crosswalk from Market to Pacific Avenue. Yep. And now Snapchat leaves, and now it is literally Skid Row. It's so bad. It's just a tent city. Yeah. It, it has been a weird change. Nikki's was a hot spot, man. When I when I first moved to Savage Town in 2008, that was the bar where like very attractive girls would go, but you were also dealing with the BS. Yeah. Like Townhouse wasn't a thing. Yeah. Townhouse was the bar of like, hey, you can get laid, but you might also get syphilis. Yeah. Like that's that was that was, bef- that was pre like st- townhouse like going into the craft cocktails vibe. They didn't the speakeasy didn't even exist. Yeah. For the first few years I was here. Like to the point I the only person who would regularly go to townhouse with me was guy on a couch. People were like, Oh, that place is a dump. Why'd you go there? I'm like, dude, I always like meet girls there. I yeah. like to go there. Yeah, it has been a crazy evolution, but I don't know where this place will be as we discussed last night, we have seen a massive transformation of Venice since the pandemic started. Yeah. So accelerate 12 months from now. Good luck. Like places like Tokoya and some of these other places. I. They survived Andy Ruther. They, su- they survived the Andy Ruther attacks, but can they survive the pandemic? You tried to put out two businesses on the same block. Which businesses? The pizza place and Tokoya Organica. I think the pizza place is done. It's gone? Yeah. It's hilarious. It serves them right. <laughs> Charging forty-two dollars for it's kinda sa- it's kinda sad that you that you had to be gone for so long. The the eventual Andy Ruther being the pizza place's biggest patron was inevitable and <laughs> <laughs> It would have just been so, such a great thing. That never would have happened. <laughs> That's the one thing I'm not going to give up is the pizza. Th- like, the pizza thing, 
<laughs> I'm very particular about the pizza slices. You just don't charge that much. That was absurd. I was so I mean, there was there was a time where you were literally walking down to uh planchas and being like, guys, listen, if you need me to firebomb Tokoyo Organica for you to make sure you keep your your stronghold on the tacos in town, oh, God. I got you. Now you're like, fuck plancha forever. Yo, I plancha is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> but but to my credit, plancha got <laughs> a lot worse. When you started eating at Tokoyo Organica. <laughs> You're like, you know what? Plancha's quality is pretty poor. <laughs> Your taco evolution is fantastic. <laughs> From fucking Del Taco to Taco Bell to Plancha to go to Coya Organica to now just making your own carnitas burritos at home via Trader Joe's. You're right. You know how they do the the the, the, the evolution of Andy Ruther that has been discussed at mul- in multiple calls on this show. It's no more clear than in your Mexican food eating vibe. It's so true. You know how they have the picture of like ape developing into man? Yeah. That's me, but with tacos. Yeah. You hunched over <laughs> holding two 30 pack Del Taco bean and cheese burrito party packs. You slightly more upright holding a bag from Taco <laughs> Bell. <laughs> you almost upright walking home with some cardboard from a cardboard taco pl- from Plancha's. <laughs> And then to you just being a fully formed man eating <laughs> at Tagoya Organica. Using utensils. Yeah, with utensils and an agua fresca. Unbelievable. Joe, it's been fun here, man. And uh, I'm going to miss it, but hey, like you said, this is a chapter in the Dirty Sports book, and we're just going to start a new one. Yeah. You know, I've been, I've been very reflective uh, in my move out of Venice because I've only lived – in Venice since I've been to L.A. I've moved so many times in Venice. Sure. And there were so many times where I was not ruling out. Like, I use, I always use it as my center, but I was always open to the idea of going, like, you know, into Santa Monica or into Mar Vista or into the marina or into Playa or whatever, all the surrounding neighborhoods here. I just liked – I wanted to be by the beach, and all of my friends, obviously, at, at this point are here. So there were so many times where I was like looking for a place and almost, and I always, for some reason, ended up finding a place in Venice that I liked. I've been, I've been in a million different places in Venice. You know all, I mean, you've probably helped me move a dozen times. But going through leaving Venice, you know, I, I look at my life, and it was, never, it was never planned like this, but I moved to New York City after college in 2001. I moved to California in 2010. So it's basically my 20s in New York, my 30s in Venice, and now my 40s outside of Venice. It, like, you, you totally breaks down as chapters, not just for my life, but also, like, year. Like you're looking at basically 2000, 2010, 2020 are the major moves. It's like decade chapters. Yeah. And it'll be interesting. You know, 2020 has been a motherfuck of a year uh, across the board for Everybody, nobody more so than you. I mean, we're only, again, you know, I'm still dealing every day with this leg thing. Like, I, st- I still think about about that every time I'm I'm in pain with this. I'm like, that was the beginning of 2020. Unbelievable that I was like, wow, what a shit start to the year. The idea when I was laid up thinking about where we would be nine months later, I was always looking at like, oh, by fall, I'll be healthy be able to do this and this and this and where we've come just like as a world in 2020 it's crazy so like in a way i feel like every single person alive is starting a new chapter now whether they like it or not yeah and it'll be interesting to see from the dirty sports podcast what that next chapter is it'll be crazy that's for sure well it's gonna involve chris collinsworth because i'll be closer to him yeah let Collinsworth pod. I love it. Guys, so much love, so much happiness for all the dirt balls. You've been a part of this journey from the start, and we could not do this without you guys, and that's the truth. Anything that we give to you, you always reciprocate back to us, and I'm very grateful and thankful for that. And I'm looking forward to the next chapter. So a big cheers, big salute to the Dirty Sports in the Smut Studio. It's been fun, Joe. Dirtballs, 
we look forward to the next chapter. And as we move on to this next chapter, always remember. Condoms are, f- oh, wait, sorry. Stay dirty. <laughs>